So we'll start again. So, okay, uh, yeah, fine. let's just talk about a bit about foraging. Okay. Um, so, obviously, we went and collected some elderberries this morning. Um, what What are some benefits of using them, and specifically, potentially, with uh, like pug beasts and the dogs' diet? Okay, so really nice time to forage in elderberries at the moment. And the reason we do that is because they boost the immune system and they are antiviral. And in which case they uh, contain vitamin A, vitamin E, so really nice to run alongside the diet to boost immunity and nutrition. And in Pugster's case, we often give him some uh, an infusion, elderberry infusion, into his dinner because um, it, we, find, we find that it reduces histamine. That's something we've come across in the time of using them, really. What are the benefits of kind of understanding um, your surroundings and potentially, you know, understanding enough, whether it be in your garden or out on the walk with the dogs, being able to potentially pick things up that are, benefit for, bene are beneficial for both your nutrition. Okay. So I think um, we buy lots of herbs and you, it takes a while, they become like friends, you need to get to know them for all the different properties. But um, foraging is, uh, I think it's a lifelong experience and a love of nature. You get to, um, obviously seasonal, you choose the seasonal things, they're individual, you get to know that herb and it creates an experience and you start to either make some syrups or you may you dry them and you use them so um, understanding and I think foraging gives you a link to nature because of that seasonal thing it focuses your mind you look at something and if you notice in nature all the compounds that are found in here vitamin a vitamin c they're needed for the immune system and obviously during winter when it gets damp and we're more prone to colds nature usually reflects everything that we need so getting to know nature is actually also getting to know food on the body which is a really interesting experience what was it that originally how how long has it been that you've been kind of in, interested and invested in potentially learning more about you know the, the various plants around you and how they can help nutrition we've worked with um i've worked within herbalism for quite a few years now um since around 2008 when i had my own health issues I wanted to start getting healthier. I was interested in the land and learning about herbs. But since we, we moved to the, from the city three years ago, so that's really when we sort of become involved in foraging, number one, because we're in the surroundings and we've got more time. And so um, really nice, sort of quite a recent thing to go and actually get our own and to use them. Yeah. What are maybe some more benefits for, for foraging? Why is foraging good for yourselves okay. and for the dogs? We love foraging because uh, the dogs really enjoy coming out in the park. It means they can take the time and have a sniff around and a wonder. They're all very trustworthy. It gives us something to focus on and it gives us a reason to go out. And um, it's nice to include them and to make something that ultimately we, we know that the dogs can eat and enjoy as well as us. Really um, satisfactory. Brings a lot of enjoyment. Well worth foraging. It's, uh, so yeah, something really nice to do. So has any, has, are there any studies or anything towards uh, dogs, uh, dogs eating potentially f foraging for things that might be vegetables or herbs? Do, would they have, uh, have they ever eaten things like that as opposed to just eating protein? Uh, yeah, it's uh, really interesting actually. Um, in terms of uh, dogs that have perhaps been fed on kibble, they're not in their natural environment and so it takes them a while. However, um, dogs can smell what's good for them and compounds in there and um, Pugster will forage his own things. We know when um, Pugster needs to detox his body because he'll start eating the grass and eating certain leaves and things outside and um, I just take that as a sign that he needs to cleanse his liver and we'll go on a short detox program usually in spring. Um, so I think um, dogs are, I think when you take them out of the natural environment they have to get used to being back in the wild. We go for a lot of walks, we've always had off lead roaming, we've been doing it for quite a few years now so Pugster almost, and when he gets poorly, we'll give him different foods and he'll choose which feed he wants. It's almost like he knows what he needs to make himself better. But I think that isn't acquired, it's a skill that he's, he's worked on. Like he knows, obviously, he's uh, tasted a food or a herb, he likes it, he's quite happy to have it a go. And uh, we trust him, and actually it's worked, it's like five years now. So even with his tumour that's come up a little bit at the moment, which happens sort of every year, it's almost like the body comes out of balance and then we have to put it back in. We're doing really well now with topical herbs and working on it, but we've done a variety of things, whether that's uh, herbalism, nutrition, and it's not to, uh, not to treat the cancer, just more to support the body and keep the body as strong as we possibly can to slow 
essentially the growth done. So what um what is it that what are the conditions it's got? Okay, so Pugstow was um I adopted him four years because he was going to get put down the vert he'd been on chemotherapy for mast cell cancer and he um, he was been on steroids to the point where he was panting in a significant pain. So his owner was um, thinking about ending his life. I asked, could I take him just to see? Because I knew how how effective the the body is, how amazing the body is at healing. And when you can fix those mechanisms that are out of place for whatever reason, and the body responds really well. So something like a detox period, and then um, obviously to strengthen his body. And I literally. He led me on a journey of food, really, to the strengthening the body. And then in terms of the mast cell, it's um, an allergy cell. So we started researching food allergies and we started cutting different foods out, but then also supporting his body to deal with those allergies better. And um, yeah, it seems to, seems to work. It's amazing. He's, uh, he's the greatest little guy. He's got a real love for life and um, we have some, we have trust. I think, and almost like, like I say, a level of communication. He knows what he wants, he knows how to teach me that. And yeah, well, I think we, we both learn a lot. And I think just the enjoyment is, um, I've had so much enjoyment from fixing him. And he's brought me, obviously we've got a healing centre in the country and really every decision we made, we just made it based on Pugster. You know, what would be better for him? It'd be better if we could get him out every day. It'd be better if we were closer to the beach. Um, it'd be nice to be able to forage our herbs and have a little organic delivery, which we could get in the city, but it's not the same, you know, it's really not. We've got so much more freedom over here. And when we used to have a camper, go in the travels, and he's just he's so excited. He can actually, he's got a real love for being out, and uh, it's that love that we just wanted to keep going. So, yeah. So did you know him before you uh, you, took, you took him on, basically? Um, yeah, so... Was there, was there a difference with his kind of... A visible difference do you think with his kind of personality and potentially obviously potentially his quality of life but was there is there a difference in how he, he, he acts do you think yeah i think there is now definitely and it's built up over the years um he had a brother called jake who was a little boy who named him pugsley and um i think that they had a great life and jake was a lovely person he said that i could help pugster and that he should come and live with me so before that i think for about a year um i'd been pug sitting Pugster in the holiday, school holiday, so that mum and their son could go away on holiday. And, um, oh, he just, uh, he became part of the family and we really missed him when he went away. And, uh, yeah, we joke he just became ill because he wanted to come and stay. But I think just because he had pug friends and um, probably because we went on adventures, which we were blessed that we had the ability to do. You know, we weren't stuck to school holidays. We, I was working from home at that point, so it was easy to, um, to take him on more adventures and things. And obviously when we found out he was sick, I just, I don't know, something just was like, I need to, I need to try, you know, because, um, yeah, he was quite special. He was just cute, really cute. And what were the kind of, you mentioned about kind of the communication between the two of you, mm. what were the things that you kind of learn, whether it be how to read what he's mm. telling you, uh, what were the kind of things that... You picked up. Gosh, so when he was first first came to me, he was really sick. So we um we started to detox him, and um, he was poorly. He was in his basket, intended and playing castor oil, trying to make his liver function more effectively. And at, at the beginning, it was just an eye gaze, and almost like he'd let you do something to him. So there's that trust thing. I think at that point, after around two to three weeks, when he started feeling better. That's when he was like, oh, for example, we try and um, apply herbs under his armpit because he had a tumour there. He lift his arm up and it was like, get him to smell the medicine first. He'll actually, yeah, lift his arm. If he didn't want to, he, just, he looks away. Um, and then, I don't know, we um, read crystals and energy and Reiki. When he's on the bed at night, um, he'll, he'll open his arms and he'll let you do it. When he's had enough, he'll move away. So it is... We, we, you know, you do know what he likes and what he doesn't like. And then I think in terms of food, we feed him one dinner and then we're giving him the dinner the next day or a different choice. And it's up to him whether he chooses the different one or doesn't, you know. Uh, for example, he's loved eggs for quite a while and then the other day he's just, hmm. Or when his tumour comes up, he might 
Fish, obviously, omega-3 is very good for anti-inflammatories, but also needs to be in balance. So I don't know what's going on in Pugster's body, particularly because all dogs are individual. How much oil do they absorb? In what ratio? No one really knows those details. We know that dogs need the two different types of oil for inflammation. And so I'll put a bowl of beef down or a bowl of salmon down. I'll let him make his choice. And then I'll be like, right, okay, he goes with the fish. Let's go with the inflammation route now. Let's try and reduce that. If he goes with the meat, I presume he's needing extra nutrients, nourishment, building. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, uh, he's pretty good at communicating now. Yeah. Yeah. So certainly communicating at the moment. He's brilliant when, uh, yeah. Ignoring <laughs> had, a nice, had a nice walk this morning and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's he's a nice really... soundtrack to the interview, I think. Yeah. It's just hearing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what? When someone someone new comes to you, how do you approach basically a dog that maybe you haven't necessarily mm -hmm. built up that relationship mm -hmm. and rapport with, it and, and and potentially with the owner as well? Mm -hmm. How how does it? How does that kind of relationship form and you know in, in then being able to um, advise them on what might be better for their okay. dog? So number one, all dogs are individual, all their needs are different. What what one dog tolerates in food, like maybe a higher fat diet, another dog doesn't. So it's about getting to know the dog first, and that ultimately means getting to know the owner. So um, I do say that I always need to do a consultation, and I do. I've just I've got to gather all that information. And it's a wealth of information, what they're like, especially if we don't see them, we do it over the phone, what they're like in energy, what their skin quality is like, what the fur is like. Um, and then finding out about the lifestyle, what food do they feed? So we need to gather all that information. Once I've gathered that information, I, I sort of know what's going on with the dog. And um, then it's about teaching the owner. And that's why naturopathy and nutritional science is just so much about education. You know, you can do this, um, for example, try to feed the oils if it works and things are looking like they're progressing. That's fine, but you'll only go so far and then the body needs to rebalance. So it's like almost trying to teach the owner, all the concepts of naturopathy, which obviously we're going to talk about this. And um, from that point on, trial, a little bit trial and error with the foods. And um, usually we do consultations in a short period of time. So for two weeks to test out the food, if it shows that it's right for the dog, then we can continue. So very much like a stop and start process. Um, all that information gathering and then just a lot of education alongside. And um, yeah us to, to see really and contact but you know the body's always changing i think we had a case with one dog who had mast cell cancer and we started detoxing the body and then lots of skin cells on the chin came out obviously toxicity comes through the skin when the body is overloaded so it was a case of really waiting that out and trusting in it and not really trying to suppress that anymore because that toxic the body was cleaning that's a good thing but that's also really scary at the same time and it doesn't you know you think the dog's getting worse almost so it's very much about making sure that the owner that you've got that rapport there that they trust you and um that communication because that could easily get worse and it wouldn't be fair on the dog and it must be dealt with correctly and you know so it's very much about close contact dealing day to day and dealing with the problems as they arise and, and and also it's it, it's clear that you're someone who's quite experienced and and uh, knowledgeable in the area but how important is it to have um because i think this is a kind of potential an industry that that can quite easily there be kind of us and them between maybe maybe more standard kind of veterinary mm. practices mm. and then more herbal mm. just like there is mm. with humans mm. you know there's 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 very it doesn't blend that much mm. um and quite, and people can be quite mm. you know harsh harsh mm. views on that how do you deal potentially with mm -hmm. that and what are your maybe um what are the things that are really important that you kind of to you about okay. in in doing this and not necessarily being mm -hmm. seen as someone who just feeds their dogs mm -hmm. just vegetables or something you know mm -hmm. or something that you, you know mm -hmm. that hasn't really taken much thought yeah i think number one um i make it really clear that we need to work with the vet we're a complement to the vet we're not an alternative um, the vet's got the dog's safety in mind, the health, pain, relief, all of those things. We're literally supporting the body and making it stronger. So a really good rapport with the vet and with the owner is vital. And then it isn't just, um, I think vets aren't nutritionists. And I think vets are coming round now to the importance of nutrition. And so I think there's that kind of building bridges almost, you know, 
I've got lots of patients that will go and see the vet and the vet's like, wow, you know, you're doing something right. I didn't expect that. I keep doing And then they almost get interested. And I think that's what we need to do. I think we really like to separate allopathic medicine, this is the way, very regulated, and nutrition. There's a place for both, and they are indeed a complement. And so it would be it would be irresponsible of me to think or to be in place of a vet. I'm not. I'm literally here to guide the owner into the nutrition and if herbs, but obviously herbs aren't regulated yet, and so it's very much um, the vet in both of us together make that agreement with the owner. And should we want to try things, everyone is on hand together. So very much like a group project and I think that's really really important. In terms of nutrition there's a lot of people out there with a lot of opinions. At the end of the day there is a research council that have done um, canine experiments, it's the best we've got in research and the we when we started researching all the foods and the nutrition and the diets that we come up with are optimal nutrition. They've got the, the very they've got the very best that um, we can give them in terms of nutrients. And we know the balance within those nutrients um, is in the NRC and we really stick to those guidelines. So the, we are working with cutting edge, really, cutting edge um, science, which I think is um, going to be seen as really valid, whether or not it is at the moment. And there are still arguments on how do you feed your dog, whether you feed raw or cooked. It's really not the argument at all. The argument is nutrients and it's about making those nutrients available for the dog. And when the body gets the majority or the very best nutrients it can, it starts performing as it should. And um, I've just I've seen so many turnarounds, not even in, in humans and in dogs, that it's effective. You know, many, many diseases and chronic disease and all those kind of things. Um, nutrient deficiencies are often a root cause. And they're something that are easy to fix, you know. And so there's an awful, awful lot of groundwork that goes into fixing dogs. It isn't like we fed posted us some salmon today and you know, it's a combination of the nutrients making sure that balance is right and yeah like I say an incredible incredible amount of time and research has gone into it all and it does for every dog because all dogs are different they're all different weights and as I say some dogs are more prone to I don't know dog with pancreatitis or wheat pancreas is not going to tolerate a high fat diet etc etc we want to reduce the carbohydrates um, in a dog with cancer for energy, but we also want to make sure he's, they've got enough to run around and to have all the energy they need for the heart and for the brain. So it's about a holistic viewpoint in terms of nutrition and then in terms of herbalism, as I say, um, to work with the vet and to just make sure we're, we're a complement and we're all on the same page. Hmm. So what would you say to someone who was potentially looking at, uh, you know, okay. wanting to broaden their horizons of, of, of feeding their dog, not just... Okay pedigree channel yeah. you know not just the standard thing um and maybe wanting to get in touch um number one is um it's really interesting it's amazing and it's really really cutting edge science that is just it's the best we've got i'm sure we're going to learn things and how we teach we're going to change those things as we get to find out more but right now it is really oh, it's quite a bold statement but feed a dog what they need and they're rarely ill my guys I don't know, um, Pugster's been going for four years now, even with his cancer, we're not ever trying to treat that, we're just making his body stronger, but he's done far longer than we expected. Esmeralda, she's 15 and a half, she's still running in the park, and of course, you know, there are things wrong with her, but she's ultimately in good health, and I do think that comes down to, you know, correct nutrition and the best. And um, even if you, I think just so many small things, that if you knew how the body works, I don't know, a lack of calcium, just the effect or a lack of B vitamin one perhaps for theamine, just the effect that it could have on the body if it wasn't there is devastating. And I think if people are wanting to come and learn about it, it's why we do our cooking classes and it's why we teach and we do the education. It's about getting to know the nutrients and how they work in the body. And then ultimately you will understand the importance and how effective it is. And I think it is, yeah, it all just must come down to education. Like, and you can't just pick and choose nutrients. And I think get to know the foods, get to know the nutrients in there and you can start formulating your own diets and you can you can do that with um with being open then with more opportunity and how you feed them and how you take on that knowledge and what you do many of our customers do it in many different ways to suit their lifestyle so it isn't like it must be this plate and it must be done in that way however you do need the knowledge to 
to give you those skills and I think um, I'd say that to come on a cooking course is really valuable or to have a consultation because you learn, you learn the theory and how you put that theory into practice is completely up to you then. Are there any kind of pitfalls or things that people do wrong mm. uh, that whether they're someone that actually just has their own very narrow view mm. about feeding mm. their dog or people who might think oh I know a little bit of a nap mm. about nutrition mm. Ego, I know everything. Is there any yeah. sort of mistakes you, you find people make quite often? There are, but the, the people make those mistakes, I think, because the information isn't readily out there. It took me a long time to find those statistics and the nutrients that I needed for Pugster. And I was a researcher. I had the time to do that. It was, um, I, yeah, I was blessed to have that time. And I think there is so much false information on the internet. And I think people that know a little bit or very stuck in their ways, we have to admit that like canine nutrition is such a new subject, we're only really starting to care. And although there are studies from way back when, from the 60s, from the 70s, all of those things, we still don't know enough. We don't know enough at all. And so even my like my findings and my sort of concept that I've come up with, that's open to change. And if I said I knew everything, we, we'd be lying because we're just not at that stage yet. And so I think people get very bogged down in how and what type of food to feed. But it isn't really about that. It is really about understanding the nutrients. So what I say to anyone that perhaps thinks they they know or they're very dominant okay that's fine but um, come and learn about nutrients and how those nutrients work in the body and then make your decision and then tell me if you think you know everyone's got a choice to do what we like but I think when you've been educated and you know the nutrients and you know the body perhaps those um, those opinions might be subject to change or become a little broader in fact you know and I think um, I do see common mistakes. What we often see is people wanting wanting to do better for the dog. So it's all done with the greatest of intentions, but feeding a healthier diet. And let's say move into something like chicken and rice because it's healthy or it's human food rather than a packet feed. So essentially, yeah, the same as humans. You know, we're moving away from microwave meals and ready-made dinners with all the high salt on the fake feed and moving to real food. That's good. However, there's a second stage to that in that the nutrients there, what are the nutrients found in chicken? What are the nutrients found in rice? And do they cover the 40 nutrients and the 10 essential amino acids that dog needs? Probably not. You're going to find you're missing some nutrients. And then we get reliant on those two feeds. So what about all those other nutrients that are missing? Where do they come in and how do you support those? And then I guess you've got the option where dogs, we're not the same as humans. And how do they how do they get all those feeds? It's very hard to get vitamin E in a diet for a dog. You'll notice like fat soluble vitamins, unless you're feeding some form of organ meat somewhere, you're going to be short on those. Um, for dogs like for owners when they move off kibble and they come on to like, so they're feeding the chicken and rice, where's the calcium? And so even with the best of intentions, if you're feeding raw bone, how much raw bone do you feed? How much eggshell for the calcium do you need to supply that? They're things that, like I thought, that was common knowledge. And actually when you start getting your consultations through the door, you find out people have got the best of intentions, really wanting to do the right thing. But actually that knowledge just isn't there. And it's really surprising. And so I think... Um, as I say, everyone's at a different stage, but that knowledge needs to be made more available. And that is obviously my intention and what we're trying to do at the Leafy Tree under personally cut. Mm. So it's how it's so, it's so important to just, just, just question things, not necessarily. Yeah. And yeah. that's what science exactly. is. And that's what exactly. I think uh, quite, that, that's what kind of drew, drew me to yourself mm. and uh, wanting to maybe come out and, mm. and interview yourself because it was not just um, quite often. And it, and it happens a lot with mm. some companies that are, an offshoot of a bigger mm. company they just it's all about the branding mm. and they just look like oh we're mm. doing this brilliant mm. thing this is how you should do mm. it and, and it might be mm. you know dog nutrition but mm. actually they're just doing exactly the same they're yeah. just doing it with a face on it yeah. whereas yourself it was mm. almost just as important if mm. not more important from what i got from your website was the results mm. but it was just as much as that was the science behind mm. it and how mm. you got to those results mm. and that it's not just I know best. <laughs> I've, I've tested it myself yeah, and it works. Yeah. It's the, yeah. you know, a, a, a true scientist is constantly trying to mm. prove that, they, that they're not wrong. Or actually, yeah. sorry, it's, it's actually trying to prove that <laughs> they, they are wrong, you know, trying to make sure that, I, yeah, you know, I make, think make sure so. that the thing they've said is, is actually I, that's correct by trying to make it fail. 
it's true that's like almost like a level of arrogance you know that you've gone that i think people sometimes presume oh you're the best or this or that no not at all it's just that i've been down every single rabbit hole i've i in my search i've wanted to say all oh, right this guy's a vet and he's portraying nutrition so but then actually a lot of it is just good branding there are holes in there a lot of it is just just people charging so much money for something that's just marketing it's just marketed in a different way and there are things that consumers totally miss like and so it isn't about i'm not my way or the highway and then consumers go well can we do this and can we do that as well i'm like okay but it's about this the fundamental point is for example i don't know you could you can feed them beef only but what are you going to do for the rest of those nutrients and so you know different i think yeah good branding just um yeah really clever really and it doesn't and as i say once i've gone down those rabbit holes i almost feel bad sort of saying well this is fine but you could also do this and it is it's about the science for me i've got an ma in music psychology and neuroscience um research ma so research is really important for me and i think what worries me is even sticking something really simple on my website that's taken wrongly and why I'm always like education, 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 but I could write 10 points, but if you don't perhaps do those correctly, then you're still gonna run into problems or it could be dangerous for the dog. So for me, advertising and how do I go? Or would I just give some advice out freely and go try this and that? No, I'm not, it's not, I'm not money grabbing being, oh, I need a consultation or you must come and do this. It's because I don't wanna give an answer that potentially is so open because there's loads of science behind it. I want the owner to know all the science to make their own judgment and then let's go from there you know and um, companies don't do that we don't do that when we go to the doctor you know we don't tell them your life story and really we should because emotions impact on our health the food that we eat we are made of food we're made of proteins we're made of fats and so what then we all go on low fat diets with weight watchers to cut out calories you know we've been detrimental to our hormonal systems and then we don't we don't think about the impacts on that and so which is really hard and you can't you can't get that one-to-one -one and get their life history in that time or through advertising or through branding you know it doesn't that doesn't work everything's oversimplified diets are oversimplified for humans they're oversimplified for dogs you know it's just not that simple and i think that, like you mentioned it's almost there's there's the empowerment in in that knowledge and it's almost yeah. uh, obviously as you will deal with one-to-ones mm. and that's mm. the best case scenarios because you're helping those people understand mm. and learn mm. and then potentially educate themselves mm. so that they can begin their own nutritional journey you yeah. know, for yeah, the dogs for sure. or for themselves mm. or whatever. Um, and, and, but then also understand that it's not a one-stop shop, just no. like going mm. to a, a high street chain mm. and buying mm. a particular vitamin mm. supplement and just mm. thinking, right, there we are, there's my nutrition yeah. sorted, now yeah. I can go have cake. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah. and it's, yeah, it's about it's understanding that and, and almost I, I suppose there is maybe which I think there is there is definitely companies out there that do it but it's um, having almost a responsibility to not just say you're brilliant <coughs> you know everything to mm. your customers mm. and just say this is all you need mm. Mm. you know your one stop mm. shop mm. all in one mm. vitamin supplement mm. It's like, well, how, how is really, that possible? Is it, yeah, no, no, exactly. It's not, and no. then uh, depending on whether it is, is that really mm. the best for you? Mm. Because it's whether it's being taken orally or in a mm. certain way, is, exactly. it, is it actually the best? Exactly. And, there and are, whether it's a liquid or a tablet, it's also, yeah. as, 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 along with so many other things. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think, yeah. And it's, are you, I suppose, are you agree? It's, it's interesting okay. how you think it's taking that responsibility of trying to empower mm. the people that you, that come on. You know, it's true like when i start with people i'll see or even with the dogs this is what you need for now you need your b vitamin and then you need your oils in and then you'll go on to see a little detox but the body's constantly changing so you take those b vitamins but then what about everything else all the other nutrients they might not be important at this time but ultimately one thing knocks on to another like cogs in the clock isn't it and so that one vitamin formula it'll work for a while no doubt or well, the quality you know um, poor quality nutrients we're realizing quality is really important you said so yourself absorbing them through the stomach is a liquid form is a tablet form better you know that information isn't available and obviously that is something that we've had to really research with the dogs and then for humans on um, the course that i trained with the nutritional healing foundation we work closely with cytoplan a company 
So everything is hydroponic, it's very high quality, you know, we can be assured of that quality when we're passing it on to patients, which is obviously really important. Um, because other thing you just you don't know you could be taking a really poor quality iron supplement and you're not you're not helping yourself at all really and so yeah just like anything things need to be regulated and again the groundwork and the level of research in that and so you know for owners i feel bad you can't you can go it alone but how do you do that and how do you mine through all the different companies and all the information that's being bombarded with you on the internet so yeah working out what the dog needs or what the human needs and then the quality and then and then obviously the body changes. Where do, where's your next step? And so, um, yeah, follow-ups are really, really important. And, um, yeah, we do follow-ups at a much cheaper price to try and keep people coming back because that's the important thing. You know, it's all well to get to one part of one stage, but that stage might not necessarily get the end result. And it's about keeping going. You know? yeah. If someone uh, has watched this and is, yeah. is interested about maybe getting in touch, mm -hmm. Um, where could they go? Okay, so we've got two websites, www.porsomelycooked, which is for dogs and for nutrition. Or we've got our business that includes everything, the Holistic Centre, um, which is the Leaf Retreat, um, leafretreat.com. And we do consultations online or, or by telephone. So obviously quite a lot of data mining, quite long, asking lots of questions. But then everything you need is posted out to you in a little parcel. So we've got customers all over the UK. And um, if you're outside of the UK, that's fine. You can do the online consultation, speak on the telephone and get told all the information that you need, really, to go and buy those things yourself. Excellent. So don't necessarily have to visit to get, you know, to no, get a lot of the information, no. I suppose, the, the benefits of potentially being able to show, yeah. like you showed me, you know, having a bit of a cookery program. Or, yeah. Um, potentially they can watch either the... <laughs> Other, the documentary that we did yep. about yourself yep. or which has a bit of a, bit of a kind of how to cook your cookery yeah yeah a quick how to yeah, yeah no for sure if you want to come down we've got a and b so you can come and stay and i think it's really valuable especially if you or your dog is suffering from chronic disease because it means you can take time you can learn about all the different elements whether that's a bit of herbalism a bit of healing a bit of energetic crystals etc it's really nice it makes a fun weekend and uh music can take lots of bits and bobs whether it's some herbs um i don't know borrow a crystal borrow a book you know you can uh, come and immerse yourself a little bit more so yeah it's nice to, and it's nice to talk in person and it's nice to be able to see the dog and to uh, just to generally spend time together getting to know each other it does help so what are the uh, if you ever what would be the list of the things that you offer if people were to come over okay so we offer um courses in foraging and herbalism uh, we've got energetic healing so crystal therapy reiki we do so really for the emotional body the physical body um, nutrition obviously uh, for humans and canines and then also for the mindset for the mental so life coaching services meditation and uh, spiritual groups so we run a spiritual meet every Wednesday where we come and we just talk about anything positive um, keeping up with um, yeah a positive healthy lifestyle that encompasses I suppose emotional mental and physical health together and what we do for the humans we pretty much do for the canine because obviously they're transferable so we offer skills in uh, reiki crystal therapy for their dogs as well as nutrition and the herbalism obviously yeah. excellent well, thank you very much <laughs> you're welcome thank me. you and thanks elliot for, yeah well done elliot yeah, and everyone else for snoring yeah pig beast puppy yeah <laughs>